the A-Class started life exceptionally small and grew significantly even before the end of its first full model life cycle just over 20 years ago the car had a wheelbase of only 2.4 meters and an overall length of just 3.6 meters which would make it small today even by super mini standards we shouldn't be surprised therefore that this new version, being a hatchback of a totally different and entirely less radical kind bears little similarity in its dimensions however a few might be disappointed that the A-Class has changed so much that it has become one of the largest five-door hatchbacks of its kind among the European class's chief protagonists only the Honda Civic Skoda Octavia and Mazda 3 take up more space at the curb a more conventional design means better proportions though and the potential for more visual appeal if the A-Class's maturity as a product were to be measured by how much less awkward looking it has become generation by generation few would disagree that it is now a fully mature prospect and as desirable a hatchback as you're likely to find the A-Class sits on Mercedes new MFA, two compact car platform and for the time being comes with a truncated choice of engines and transmissions two new downsized four-cylinder engines jointly developed with Daimler Alliance partner in OR the entry-level options are 114 bhp 1.5 liter diesel powering the A180 D with CO2 emissions of just under 110 grams slash km under 161 bhp 1.3 liter turbocharged petrol motor used in the A200 which we've elected to test here for now both come with front wheel drive and seven speed dual clutch gearboxes by Getrag although manual gearboxes will be available on both before too long for those wanting more performance it's available solely for now from the 221 bhp 2.0 liter turbo petrol a 250 although more powerful diesels are in the pipeline as you may already have read the a-class is the first mercedes passenger car to be designed with torsion beam rear suspension the idea of that may offend some but it probably shouldn't given how well the technology is employed more widely in their hatchback class if you want fully independent suspension it comes as standard on A250 models or as an option on the A200 in range topping AMG line trim our test car was a mid-spec A200 sport with the torsion beam axle adaptive dampers are also optionally available although they weren't fitted to our test car if there's one thing Mercedes has seemingly nailed with the latest A class it's the way the thing looks from behind the wheel here is a cabin that properly fits in with what you would expect from a premium family hatchback the abundant bright working on the event surrounds center console and steering wheel draws the eye while all that gloss black surfacing when it's fingerprint free, at least lends the smallest Mercedes an upmarket appeal that's not too dissimilar to that of its larger siblings the cabin is generally all very smart and very tidily organized and laid out the triumvirate of turbine s care vents in the center of the dashboard wouldn't look out of place in an s-class and the dual digital displays that dominate the top of the dash are unlike anything we've seen before in a family hatch the fourth generation a-class makes use of the new box it stands for mercedes-benz user experience touchscreen infotainment system as standard this incorporates two 7.0 in screens one is for features such as the sat nav and radio and the other replaces the traditional analog in instrument binnacle however our test car came with the 1395 pounds executive package option which ditches the media screen for a larger 10.25 in display and what a system it is the quality of the graphics is excellent as is the fluidity with which it responds to your inputs Speaking of which Mbox can be controlled through a new touchpad that sits on the center console such systems should usually be avoided but this one is simple to use once you've wrapped your head around it the hey Mercedes voice control generally works well too our only criticism is the lack of a conventional USB socket with Mercedes relying exclusively on USB C sockets a pain if you don't have the right cable for carbon fiber paneling on the doors and dash top caused a few testers to turn their noses up but otherwise the A-Class ooze is the sort of visual appeal that rival manufacturers would do well to emulate this isn't a case of appealing form coming at the expense of easy functionality either as far as usability is concerned the Mercedes doesn't really falter although it would be a stretch to say space in the rear is abundant there's enough for two adults to sit pretty comfortably so long as they're not especially tall which while not outstanding by hatchback class standards is certainly competitive there's decent knee room in the second row and that elegantly sloped roof line doesn't come at the cost of headroom as for the boot it offers 375 liters of seats up storage capacity which extends to 1210 liters when they're folded down the floor itself isn't flush with the opening, 
so there is a bit of a lip to navigate not that this will be problematic during day to day use there are a couple of bag hooks in the boot too that overcharged 1.3 to L liter 4 cylinder engine lends the A200 a respectable turn of pace but it's not quite up to scratch with the class's better petrol options as far as refinement is concerned and that's perhaps a bigger disappointment in light of the fact that the car's 1.5 liter diesel engine suffers with a similar major flaw there's nothing particularly wrong with the way in which it delivers its power to the front wheels except acceleration is generally quite linear and there's not a significant amount of turbo lag but it's just a shade more vocal than you'd ideally want an engine in a premium hatchback to be dot stray above 3500 revolutions per minute or so and you're met by a drone that's fairly harsh in timbre and gets notably loud as you approach the red line and straying towards the limiter is somewhat inevitable because the 7 speed dual clutch transmission has a tendency to hold on to its selected ratio longer than you might like regardless of the chosen driving mode just as irksome is the transmission's eagerness to change down what often feels like one too many gears when you gently lean on the throttle to accelerate from a lower speed so instead of making smooth control progress you can often lurch a little forward in a sudden surge of unplanned acceleration which can be disconcerting at least when you're up to speed things improve what was intrusive engine noise under acceleration settles down and becomes rather demure and unimposing at cruising revs contributing towards the A200's effectiveness as a long distance tourer the fact that it recorded an indicated touring economy figure of 56.7 miles per gallon at a sustained 70 miles per hour doesn't hurt either. Despite representing for now at least the entry level of the petrol power day class lineup the A200 doesn't feel as though it's lacking any get up and go Mercedes quotes a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 8.0 seconds and we clocked a very respectable 8.7 seconds from rest to 60 miles per hour the engine pulls keenly up to around 5000 revolutions per minute but stray too far past peak power which arrives at 5500 revolutions per minute and it starts to run out of steam by by way of comparison the 1.5 litre petrol golf we road tested last year which produced 13 bhp less but the same amount of torque as the mercedes covered 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds although the 7 speed dual clutch transmission can be a touch clunky when you're just tooling about town it works well at speed Upshifts are smooth and seamless and the paddle shifters provide tidy downshifts delving into the vehicle's submenus reveals a dedicated manual mode part of the individual program that allows far more driver control over the transmission to under braking the A200's 1375 kg mass comes to a halt in a tidy and controlled fashion it needed 50.2 meters to reach a standstill from 70 miles per hour the Golf performed the same test in 47.8 meters prices and specs must Mercedes has launched the A-Class as an incomplete model range, and those who want one straight away may end up spending a little more than they'd like there are no manual gearboxes until later this year and the entry level A180 petrol won't come along for a while yet either that the car's CO2 emissions seem to show little sign of improvement old model to new has everything to do with the upheaval in vehicle emissions homologation and nothing to do with the actual fuel efficiency of the A-Class previous testing suggests the new A180D is a real one. 60 miles per gallon touring prospect and the A200 we tested return 56.7 miles per gallon on our touring economy test caps residual value forecasts on the A-Class outstrip those of its nearest competitor the A3 and Mercedes established approach to manufacturer supported finance offers ought to make the car cheaper on a monthly basis than many might expect once spent up demand for the car has settled A-Class owners should certainly expect to spend more on options than hatchback buyers do typically if they want the full suite of onboard technology.